my name is Anders. I'm a freelance developer in Denmark, and I've been part of the code control community for a couple of years. And today I'm gonna do like a small application. We're going to try and build a habit tracker using some of the web's newest technologies. So we're going to use Swelt, and we're going to use uh, Swelt Whip TypeScript, which has been recently announced. And for styling, we're going to use Tailwind. And for one part of the state management, we're going to try and use XState. So what you see here on my left is like the main uh, application file in Swelt. Swelt is structured. Uh, each Swelt component has three blocks. It starts out with the script block where you can write your JavaScript, or if you add the language TS, as I've done here, you can add your TypeScript in here in the script block. And then you have a style block where you can write all your CSS. And then that'll actually be um, uh, uh, scoped to the, to the component. So if I did like a P tag here, so if I say usually in CSS, then all P tags would be, have like a background color of, of aqua when I do this. But if I do it in Swelt, then I can add a P tag down here in my markup and you'll see that that does indeed have like a background color of aqua but it'll only be inside this component so all the other p tags and all the other components are, are untouched which is it's a really nice uh, way of keeping your styles clean but today we're not actually going to use the style component in swelt we're going to use tailwind for all our styling so We'll just get rid of the style block here and delete this class again. And then, uh, yeah, the hello code control jumped up here. So I'll just pull the browser a bit down while we start. Okay, so what we're going to try and build is sort of like a habit tracker. But I'd like for this habit tracker to have a nice header. So we'll try to style the main class. We'll, we'll say that we want our application to be, to fill the full height. So what I'm doing now is adding Tailwind utilities. So Tailwind is a CSS utility library, where instead of writing out all the CSS yourself, you just add the class names they provide. So, and one of the newer things they've added is the ability to do gradients. So I thought, let's do some styling, like it's the 1990s again. And we'll do like a background gradient here where we go from top to bottom. So uh, what is it? Gradient to B, I think. Yeah. Background gradient to bottom. And we'll go from, uh, let's say from Indigo 200 to Indigo 900. So from like a light color to a dark color. And there we like already have a nice gradient going if you like that kind of style. Um, let's add a header as well, where we can write out the name of the application. So we'll add a, a div on top, we'll add some padding. And let's say that the, uh, we want all the text inside this div to be fairly large. So we'll start by having it text for Excel. We want the lines to be really tight. So we'll just say leading tight. We want all, all the text to be centered. <clears throat> and then we can add like a header here with the name of the application. So let's call this habit control. And there we have like the header. And let's say we wanted the H1 maybe to be slightly larger than what's else in here we want the font to be bold this looks kind of nice but um i think we need another gradient in the header here right so this time we'll go from a left to right and we'll go from an orange color so a slightly medium orange color to a darker red color. 
So now we have two gradients going in each direction, which is, this is going to be so 2020 styling. And yeah, so what I would like to have below here is like a grid of all the dates in the current month because on each day we would like to be able to check off uh, one of the habits we'd like to do. So now we have a nice header and we have like, uh, yeah, what we need to start building, but now we need to have some state. We need to kind of be able to know where we are. So let's start by building out a, oops, the focus lost there. Let's start by building out a state machine for that. So I'll create a new file called habit machine and I'll name it .ts for it to be a TypeScript file. And um, that will make it possible for us to have X state understand typing and understand all the context and all the events. It'll be, hopefully it'll be obvious in a bit why that is nice. So, yeah, we need to think about which kind of state can our application be and what is the what is the overall context of the state. So we'll start by building a interface called app context. And what we want, we want to know what the current date is, and that should be a date. And then we want to know all the dates in the current month. So that's like an array of dates. And then we want to know all the habits we have. So a, an array of habit. And right now there's nothing called habit because we haven't defined it yet, but um, we can say that a habit should be, what do we need to know about a habit? Mm, well, for starters, we need to know what the name is. So we can just leave it at that for now. So now the context is like an, array of habits and each habit has a name. And since we're using TypeScript, that'll be checked all over the application. So if we say habit dot, dot name, if we misspell name or anything, TypeScript will actually help us to, to fix errors like that. Next up, we need to think about which type of event can happen in this application. And since it's a fairly simple application, when we open it, we are shown the current month. So that can be thought of in X state terms uh, as the initial state and you need to give it a name so we can give it like an, a name of idle. So when we're not doing anything, we're just looking at the application. We can say that it's an idle state. And then when we need to add another habit, we'll be in like an edit state. So on a high level, we can be in like either an idle state or we can be in an editing state where we're actually trying to build a new habit. When we're in the idle state, we need to navigate. So we need to send an event that X state will understand. And we can build that uh, here and we can say the type of the uh, event is called navigate. This is an arbitrary name we can just decide ourselves, but navigate seems to make sense. And we would also like to know which kind of direction are we trying to navigate. So since we're starting in the current month, um, we'll maybe it'd be nice to be able to go back a month. It'd also be ni nice to be able to go home, so go to the current date, and it would be nice to go forward. So back and forth and home is, I think that will be sufficient for this. And then we also need to go from the idle state to the edit state. So we have an event called edit. And yeah, let's, let's just try and leave it at that for now. So we have our context now, which is, this is the state of the application. It has dates and it has habits. And then we have defined two events that we would like to handle. So now we can actually start uh, building our state machine. So we'll call it habit machine. And 
will import create machine from X state. And create machine takes uh, type arguments. So we'll give it the context and the events that we would like to handle, the ones we just defined. And we'll say that we want to build our machine here. What's this? We have a bit more space. So as I talked about, it's nice to have like an initial state or you need to have an initial state for a machine. And the initial state, uh, we'll call it idle. Um, then we need to think about what should the context be when we just open the application. So what, what is our starting context? What's the state when we open the application? And for this, I think we'll, we'll have like a, we'll build a little helper function called build context. And I guess it would make sense for it to take a date. And it would also make sense for it to take an array of habits. Uh, let's just give in an empty array for now. So we need to define our build context helper function here, which takes in the date and it takes in um, the habits. And this should return a new app context. If you've ever used Redux or something like that before, this is slightly similar where you always kind of mangle the current state you have. So what we do here is we take some input and we return a new context. And we'll just return an object directly. So we'll say the current date. So what we're building now is this thing here. So the current date should be the date we're getting in. Then we need to build the current month. So that one is slightly harder because we need to take the date we're getting in and build an array of all the dates within that month. Um, but luckily there's other people who've had the same problem. So for this, I'm going to use a module called date FNS, which is like a really nice uh, utility library for working with dates. And here we can say each day of an interval and we'll give it a start of, um, so we need to give the interval a start date and then they provide another helper called start of month. So we can say, get the start of the current month from this date. And then we need to provide an end date and they have an end of month as well. And finally, we need to provide the habits. So using date FNS here, we actually got an array of all the dates in the current month in a really handy way. Um, so now we have an initial context, which is the current date and all the dates of this month. We don't have any habits yet. Uh, hopefully we'll get to that later. So in our state machine, we'll, we have to define what's the possible state we can be in. And as we talked about, we can be in the idle state and we can be in an edit state. And this is basically a valid machine now. It doesn't do anything, but it's a valid machine. It has a context and it has a starting point. So when we open the application, we'll be exactly where the cursor is right now. We'll be here, but I mean, nothing's happening. So we need to say um, when we're in the idle state and we receive some sort of event, we need something to happen. So when we're in the idle state and then on, event, um, we need something to happen. And because we're using TypeScript, we've defined the types of event that can happen. We can actually see in here that VS Code already knows that there's like two events that can happen, the navigate and the edit event. So let's say when navigate happens, this needs, we need to fill in something here. And we would also like to be able to handle the edit event. And since when we're getting an edit event in the idle mode, it's fairly simple because we just, just need to transition into the next state down here, which is the edit state. And we can just give it the name 
So this one is super simple. So if you have like a very simple state machine, you can just say, okay, when this event comes in, transition to this next event. The navigate thing is slightly more involved because we need to change our entire app state since we're chase, changing the context when we're doing it. So what we can say here is when we receive the navigate event, we want an array of actions or we want some actions to happen. And we only want one action to happen. In this case, we wanted to assign a new state. And when this action happens, we get the previous or the current context in and we get the actual event as well. And then we just need for it to um, do stuff and we need to import sign from X state. And then we can see that the type of context when I hover is app context. So it already knows that because we're using uh, TypeScript and it even knows that this type of event is the navigate event because it's happening inside this navigate thing. So you get like a ton of help for free. So since we already know which type of event it is, we can actually do a switch on the event and we can say we're interested in the direction because that's what we defined as our extra thing here on the navigate event. So now we need to handle all the types of directions we can and we defined like a back event and if someone presses back we need to return an entirely new context. So we can use our helper function once again, and we can say that now we, now we don't want to go to the current date. We actually want to go to, uh, I mean, we could model it in different ways, but let's say we want to navigate months. So now we're in August. If we press back, we want to go to July. So the current date should be some date in July. So, we can say that let's there's a helper function called add days, which can either add or subtract days to a date. And so we want to be able to find a date in July right now. So what we can say is give me the current month, give me the first date in the current date array, which should be August 1st. And we can just say minus one to that because then we'll get like the last day in July. So that should be fine for the current date. And then we just need to send it in the current habits because we haven't changed the habits. And that should be sufficient actually for going back a full month. And then we can add the other two cases. So if we need to go home, it's actually even easier because it's just the same thing as we're doing first. We just need to navigate to today and we're, that's just by building a new date object. And if we need to go forward, we need to get the last date of the current month. So we'll say context that current month dot length minus one. And we'll just add one day to that to get the first date of September. It's, I mean, the, the thing with X state is that it's, it has like a high slope of getting started. But once you're over that like initial learning curve, you'll start to recognize the patterns when you look through like a machine and it'll very quickly become very natural to use it in this way. And the thing I found for myself, which makes very much sense using X state is that you can, uh, you decouple your state management from your actual application logic. So here we're, we're saying that we only want to consider navigation events we're in, when we're in the idle mode. So when we're in the edit mode uh, or down here, we, we're not handling navigate events. So when we eventually reach the point where we can add a habit, when we push add habit and we're in the edit state, then we, we can't accidentally navigate back and forth uh, because we're not handling the events. So it makes it very easy to build, to kind of uh, avoid uh, users 
using the app in a way you didn't think about in advance because X state makes forces you to think about how the app should behave in advance. Okay, so now we have like a simple machine. We need to be able to use that uh, in our application. So we'll export it from our habit machine file here and we'll say we want to export uh, state and we want to export send and we'll use a little library called use machine and we'll give it the machine we just did. So use machine is a, like a utility library uh, for making it easy to extract state and send from the machine. Uh, there's similar utilities for React. I think there's even official ones for React. So let's go back to the component we're actually looking at here and try to use, use our machine now. So we'll start by importing the state from our habit machine. And let's just start by having it uh, output, which kind of month we're in, then we can see if we're able to make changes. So we'll import format from date FNS. And let's map, let's pull out the current date from this state object we've taken in. So state.context current date. So what I'm doing here is like a Svelte specific syntax where I'm saying build this, make a variable called current date and make it reactive. That's the dollar sign colon thing. So whenever this thing on the right changes, also change on the left. So it would be slightly similar to a use state hook if you know that. But let's give it the current date and we want it to be show the full month and we also wanted to show the year. So if we're lucky, we get a build error in the terminal. I think it's because we added a file, so I'll just restart the dev environment here. Now we have like the current month and we are pulling it out of X state. So the next thing we'd like is we'd like to be able to send events to the state machine so that we can see we can navigate back and forth. So let's just build three simple buttons and for going back, let's use an emoji for going back and let's do the same for going forward. And, and we need another one for the third thing, which was going home. Then we need to import send here so we can actually send an event and we can say this is swelt syntax so on click we need to do something and um, we'll send an event we'll send a event of type navigate and we'll give it a direction and as you can see because we're using typescript it already knows all the stuff we can do so here we want to navigate black back let's just copy and paste this to the other buttons. And for the home one, we're going home and the last one we're going forward. And if we misspell anything, TypeScript will say, no, no, that's not something I know. And it'll try to help us and say, this type forward is not assignable to these three types I know you can actually use. So it's super nice. Uh, with the low overhead, you get a very, it's, it's, it's a big helping hand. Okay, now we have three buttons here. And if we haven't goofed up, we can actually now press these buttons and we can navigate. So now we're changing the entire application state every time we kind of push one of these buttons. And yeah, so, so far we can, actually, we can see that something is working now, but it'd be nice to kind of also be able to see the dates we're working with. So Swell has its special syntax for running through uh, 
collections. So let's say we want the current month as well from this date. So we'll pull out current month and we'll put it inside its own variable. We could have used like this current date uh, down here, or we could use state context current month here as well. I'm just doing this because it looks nicer in the syntax to have it shortened. So we'll say for each thing in current month, let's call that day. And for each day, we'll just, yeah, what are we going to do? We're going to, uh, we're going to format that again. We're going to say day, and we're going to say, hmm, what can we say here? Uh, maybe let's not just format it, just say day and see what happens. Okay, so what we can see, we actually have like, we're starting August 1st and we're running through the entire month. And when we navigate, we'll get the same thing for each month we go into. So I'd like for this to be a bit prettier than this. So let's try to build a new component called day. So we can show it a bit nicer. So we'll add like day.swells and we'll start with the script block. And what do we need in a day? We need to be able to send in a day. So what's called a prop in other languages, we need to kind of be able to input data. The way you do that in Swell is you say like export let a day and give it what we need. So here we want to give it a date and we also, yeah, maybe that's, that's fine for now. And then we need to just show that somehow. So instead of just outputting it here, we can say now that we want to import day and we want it to use this thing called day here. So in React, you'd have to say like day equals day. But if the prop uh, is named the same thing as what you're inputting in Swell, you can just leave out the first bit and just say like that. And nothing shows right now because we're not doing anything with this day. Um, but we can try and show it again just to see if we have it. Yeah, so now we have it isolated in its own component, which is really nice. So let's try and make, a, make it look a bit nicer. Um, again, we'll just use some tailwind and we'll give each day some padding and we'll um, give it a nice background. We want it to be rounded, large, and we want the cursor to shift so that the user actually knows you can click on something here. And we want, when we are hovering, we want like a really big shadow as well. And also when we're hovering, we want the background to change to something else so that we can see that we're hovering. And we also need the text color to change. What do we need more here? What would be nice? Maybe it'd be nice if the scale changed as well. So let's say we want it to be 110% in size. And then we just need to add transform, I think, to make that happen. Yeah. So this is kind of all tailwind magic you're seeing here. So the day is, is not very pretty right now, but let's see if we can fix that. So inside here, we want each day to show what do we want it to show? We need it to show like maybe just an abbreviation of the day and the day of the month. So we can say we'll input the day and we'll do like eee.do, not dk. And let's remove this one. 
then it should say like, yeah, Saturday the 1st and so forth. And instead of just having like a list here, we can um, go back to our main view and wrap this in a grid instead. I think that looked just a tad nicer. So we'll say grid. And the grid, it, I think we need all seven days of the week uh, going from left to right. So let's add seven columns and just add a small gap between each day and just add some padding to the entire div. And then we have like each day laid out like this. And then we should be able to navigate and have this update. Um, one thing I don't like right now is that you can see that the day, the first day actually changes Good. This is the first day and this is, so it always starts with the first day. I think it'd be nice, uh, a nice experience for the user if you always had like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so forth, have the entire week. And that should be fairly simple because instead of saying start of month date here, we can just add another utility saying start of week and adding that where we build our context and the same thing with end of week. And I'm guessing it's going to pick Sunday now. Yeah, but we can change that. So we can say that, uh, what is it? Week starts on, I think one, Sunday's zero, Monday's one. like that. So now we have the days from the previous month running up all the, so everything starts on a Monday and ends on a Sunday. So it's, it's in a, a stable transition whenever you go change your month. And I think, I mean, the next, the next bits is going to be a lot of polish just using the same techniques here to go from what we have here to like the finished sample. But I think we're running out of time. So I'm just going to show you the, the finished version and I'll share the re repository with you and it'll be in the, in the comments for this video as well. So the only thing that's changed from what we actually managed to build using this time to the finished version is that we have like an add habit thing here. And the days that are not in the current month are slightly dimmed out and they don't change the cursor. And we have an animation when we hover. And that's also just a tailwind utility where you say like how you, you just input a duration and that's basically it. So I can, I've also added keyboard shortcuts, so now I can just use my keys to go back and forth. And you can see this fairly, this world is fairly fast. So if I wanted to know what day my birthday was in, in 2030, it'll be on a Wednesday, I can see. So let's, let's actually add a habit. I'm keen for running, but I'd like to run some more. So let me add a habit called run. And then you can see it gets added to each day um let me go home so you can see we've also highlighted the current date so i was out for a run on sunday so i can click run here and it'll just transition into um, me doing the run on sunday and if i navigate back and forth it'll still remember this thing and it's it's like a very simple state management here i'm just storing this in local storage so I'm just mapping each day to a list of habits that I've completed. So if I complete some more things here, you could see that each day just has like this list of things I completed. So if I add a new habit, maybe I want to eat some more broccoli. Um, I can complete them and they'll get added here as well. So if I reopen this address on the same 
a device. It'll actually remember all my habits, but there's no uh, no login and no states yet anywhere besides your own device. And I can clear out all the local storage and start over again. Yeah. So basically, that's the like the super brief introduction to Swells, X state and TypeScript. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. You're more than welcome to write me if you have any questions and I will share the repo link so you can have a look yourself. There's on the master branch, there's like a starter template so you can build your own thing. And then on the example branch, it'll contain this uh, more or less finished version of the application here. But thanks for chiming in.